giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First updates now, FTC is produced in partnership with PTC. PTC currently has the Robots to the Rescue Challenge going on where you can earn a share of $7,000 for your team by designing a robot that helps solve a current world problem at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. One thing that started uh, sprouted up recently is many teams and companies have started to make drivetrain kits that they're selling or like op making open source for as designs for other teams to use. What do you guys think about these drivetrains and how do you think they'll impact the FTC community as a whole? Yeah, so I feel I can speak from a little bit of experience here because we used a, um, a kit for our drivetrain competition this year. Mm -hmm. um, our idea was that um, we just have the kit and then just focus on mechanisms all year. But we found that when trying to make a very specific robot for the game, um, we had to work around these um, generalized drivetrains a lot. So mm -hmm. I feel that for what we were going for, it didn't quite work. But for many other teams, I feel that they can be a lot more of a viable option. But they definitely do have their pitfalls, as our team saw this year. All right. Um, I know, like, one thing that's been, like, a really big focus of the community and, like, top teams this year is, like, making sure, like, rookie teams can progress a lot further in the game and, like, making sure they can have a, they can gain a deeper understanding of robotics and the game itself uh, in their first year itself. And I think that's, like, that's a big uh, plus of these open source drivetrains and just drivetrains that you can buy straight off of the internet in the sense that like you get to focus on other components and you can and you can learn more and like you can customize more on things that are already built yeah so when i was looking at these drivetrains like yes the go build a strafer kit the andy mark tile runner i think that those are great starting points for teams to use especially a rookie team that just wants to get something moving great go for it uh, the thing that became a little fishy for me was, especially when you started looking at things like BaseBot and uh, Sokotoa Robotics that are making pretty much fully custom drivetrains available to teams. Like, mm -hmm. look at this design. This is not something I would expect a first year or even second year team to have unless they were very, very advanced and had some prior experience in engineering. And doesn't, I think, oh, yeah. Do, do, doesn't that apply to Tile Runner as well? So the, the thing about the Tyler Runner that I was okay with was the fact that it's Animark approved and there's not much that you can build off of it. So teams have to innovate on how to build off of it. With the Sokotoa or the base bot, it pretty much has all the mounting for you. So you can do almost anything with it. There's fewer limitations on them than would than are on the tile runner. And there's a reason why we haven't seen tile runners used for all of the top teams, right? I mean, a lot of the top teams are building um, custom robots that look very similar to the base bot or uh, Sokotoa because of how versatile there are, they are. And so the fact that we're just giving these designs, I know for us personally on Wizards, um, we spent after, the summer after our first, the summer after our second year, we spent time just building a ton of drivetrains. We built like five drivetrains over the summer. And that learning experience that you get from the drivetrain, I mean, you get to learn about different power motion systems. You learn about the motors. You can learn about custom fabrication. I think that those are all important learning lessons that teams need to get in order to build robots like Gluten Freeze Robot or Data Forces Robot. And just by giving them these base bots, it could be disadvantageous in the long run for them. Glu gluten Free didn't have a mostly custom drivetrain. They, they uh, did not, it's... but they've made their own designs for it, right? Like if you yeah. saw their drivetrain, uh, I've not seen their drivetrain for this year, but I saw it in Rover Ruckus. They use belts, which was not very yeah. common in FTC, and it's mm -hmm. now becoming common because of things like BaseBot and because people are starting to see it. And I think that teams need to learn how to use belts on their mm -hmm. own instead of just being given a design that they know will work with belts. I, so I, I've I studied gluten-free. Oh, go ahead. So I've studied gluten-free's drivetrain a little bit 
from like their drivetrain this year based on the CAD they posted. I know like it wasn't like 100% custom, like they did use Actobotics channel and stuff, but they did have a lot of three D printed parts. And like I was just looking at the part models, and I remember it said like for the hub inside the wheel, it was like version 17 or version 19 or something like that. So like while it wasn't like while the whole thing wasn't customized, I like I think it's very evident that Steven spent a ton of time like perfecting the parts of it that like that were custom. So I would argue um, to disagree a little bit with what um, Sean said about teams not having the, like going through the learning experience of actually making something that is, um, is as well thought out as the drive trains you mentioned. I would argue that without um, good concrete examples of how to do that, um, it's gonna be a lot harder for teams to even get to that point. Um, and when you have, when you have something that, like, like you said, with your experience, you, it was hard for your team using a, um, a pre, it wasn't pre-assembled, but a pre-designed drivetrain that wasn't really tailored to the game. It was hard to make, um, it, it was harder to make something that could play the game in the way you wanted it to. So there is still an advantage of doing it entirely yourself. We haven't seen teams make game specific drivetrains yet. Uh, uh, one thing also about that, uh, Frank, is I think like drivetrains, having standard drivetrains that teams like that, like base bots basically, is uh, is something that was bound to happen in FTC because like every year yeah. you're going to need a drivetrain, right? And so eventually, I think it was it was like it was going to happen naturally that teams would just start posting their drivetrains and making drivetrains for others uh, for other teams to sell or, or buy or use. But I think where teams can further develop their skills if they already have a drivetrain uh, made previously is they can develop their skills in making like new game elements or new game mechanisms every year because those are almost never the same, right? Like w yes, almost every year, you know, we have a slide kit or something like that, but they're always like different ways to use it. And you can't really just, you know, take one one slide kit from the previous year and use it for, you know, next year's game. Whereas with drivetrains that can happen. And it, drivetrains are also, for the most part, and especially with the ones that I've seen being um, being released in this way, are pretty simple mechanisms. Um, it's not, um, the, I, you can obviously get more complicated with uh, like having shifting, shifting gearboxes and stuff, but for the most part, what I've seen are, are pretty standard things. They're not terribly complex and I think that um, I might have more of a problem with it if it were for other mechanisms that right. like you said were more game specific um, that were encouraging teams to just copy the solution without doing any of the necessary prototyping and stuff but for something that is both simple and universal to a lot of different games I don't see any reason or I, I think that the reasons not to have it are outweighed by um the benefits that you could have for the learning experience of a newer team Great. yep i can definitely see that i think that there there's a place for them but we need to be careful on how much we're giving especially when it comes to scoring mechanisms um i think a simple design is okay but as soon as you get to complicated designs that could definitely win it's when it becomes a little sketchy Right. Um, I mean, I, I like the fact that they exist, that there's something that um, somebody who's completely brand new can just look at it and understand like, like how they should design theirs, even if they're not going to use it. And um, I mean, it, in the league that I uh, my team can be in, um, over half the teams probably were using um, the Go Build a Strafer kit. Um, and I feel like it definitely helped uh, because Everybody could score. Uh, everybody could drive around and score. Whereas uh, in years past, you've seen teams that struggle to get a drivetrain that I can uh, reliably move around. Um, and it's very advantageous for those teams. But for teams um, that are competing at the very top level, um, they're going to design their own. They're going to um, design one that's more similar to the base bot drivetrain. Um, um, 
with their Maybe. own touches and their own things that they like to do with it. Um, for example, my team, um, we design our own custom robots. Uh, we uh, completely manufacture our structure, at least, um, from using our CNC. Um, and to actually build our superstructure, we used um, Rev extrusion uh, sticking up out of the drivetrain, um, which we, I, I haven't seen like any other teams use it uh, in the same way that we do. And so we have to design a, a chassis that really fits our specific use case. We can't really use any of the chassis that are out there pre-designed, um, which I feel like is what a lot of top teams end up doing. They design one that's very specific to them and their build style. So have we got into a point where top teams can just reuse their drivetrains from previous years? Depends on um, the game. Yeah, I think yeah. I I don't think you can ever completely reuse a drivetrain from a previous year. Like I think there's always going to be uh, some changes you need to make. Like for example, like from from this year and last year, like this year's speed is a lot more key in the drivetrain, I would say, than it was last year. So you're going to have, like, you would have to change that. And like, yes, while that might be as simple as just changing the motors you're using on the drivetrain, I think good teams are always looking to learn more and learn learning more by taking new challenges and designing new drivetrains. Yeah, you'd be changing the gearboxes, not the motors, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. All right, um, awesome. We had one question from the chat. Elon asked, uh, what about the tread runner, which is a modified version of the tile runner, but it uses tank treads. Uh, have we really seen many of these types of drivetrains? I know we're kind of straying off topic, but have we seen many other types of drivetrains besides Mechanum since six wheel drives use that often? Uh, I, know, I, mean, I know we had a tank drive in um, Rescue. I, mean, uh, I, I wasn't on the... Uh, team that year, but like, I I it, I feel that with those exotic drivetrains, it's very risky to do because there's like a, not a lot of teams that kind of delve into that area to learn from, and so I guess you're mainly stuck on your own when you're doing those types of things. From, so from, oh sorry, go ahead. I didn't realize. So that. so when you're doing those like, uh, treads and stuff, I feel that it might just be a little bit risky. Right. I mean, I can't think of any teams that have like gone super far with a tread with a drivetrain other than six wheel drive or um mechanum in the past few years like the game that comes to mind when i think of it is cas or not cascade effect but rescue which was a long time ago and like there's just not really been a reason to use them there's nothing advantageous of them over a mechanum or six wheel drive uh, at least in the more recent games so actually, the chat's also talking about how Aperture Science, one of yeah. probably the most elite teams in the world, uh, they've used the same drivetrain three years in a row. So I think that it's going to really come down to uh, the team's preferences, how their team operates, and um, mm -hmm. what their workflow is like. Because yes, I think with something like the base bot, if you design it one summer, you could probably use it every single year. You just have to build around it. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so I, I really think that there is some potential for it. Um, but with that being said, anybody have any last words on this topic? Uh, no, I mean, I just think it was an interesting point that uh, people brought up about Aperture Science uh, reusing their drivetrain. I, I never knew about that. And I think like I think there is a valid point in that, as you were saying. But uh, I also think that like if like a lot of people, like a lot of the top teams, uh, when they're focusing on FTC, they do it perhaps more for like the knowledge and the things they'll gain rather than just like making like making it winning as easy as possible this video is brought to you in part by ptc look during this time it's important to look for challenges to keep your skills up and to help your team in fun development the robots to the rescue challenge can help you accomplish both by designing a robot that solves a real world problem with a chance to win a share of over seven thousand dollars for your team Click the link in the description to get started at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.